Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again. Welcome to my video on the Hankor 112B-0. This is a tier 1 plane with a battle rating of 2.3, which puts it up against the likes of the uh, first Spitfire, and of course the Russian uh, bevy of lags and uh, the MiG-334, along with the German Bf-110. So, how does it stack up against that? Particularly as there's some premium versions of this plane, both in the German and Japanese trees, which are, have even higher battle ratings. That's what we're going to have a look at in this video. Just a quick comment about the appearance of this plane, which is really quite striking with its uh, very futuristic looking uh, fuselage and uh, bubble cockpit, as well as the gold wings. It's um, For a pre-war plane it certainly doesn't look like one. Although looking at the propeller, only two blades tells me it's a pretty weak engine. In the wings are the uh, 20 mil cannon, which are MGFFs, which really aren't that haven't got a great reputation in this game, and each side of the engine are two light machine guns. So with that let's look at the armour. There is none, as usual in most pre-war planes. Look at the internal components, the fuel tanks are clustered at the roots of the wings and also underneath the pilot. Uh, all the rest of the cooling stuff is in the usual places. The wings themselves have three lots of spars and for some reason they seem pretty tough. This is not a, a weak damage model by any means on this plane. Before I move to a test flight, I just want to quickly look at the weapons, in particular the 20mm belts. Uh, the most effective right now are either the Universal or Tracer, and that's because they've got the greatest uh, amounts of incendiary, uh, fragmentation incendiary shells. And that's simply because the high explosive shells, which you'll find in the stealth belt in particular, simply do not work with this plane. And so with that, let's take it to a test flight and see how the plane performs. As usual, I'm going to run it through my normal gamut of tests. First thing I'm doing is looking at the uh, elevators, banking the plane in a simple horizontal turn, seeing if it can catch up to its smoke trail, which tells me whether or not the elevators are, are good enough to use in a dogfight. And it uh, cannot. The elevator is actually quite weak on this plane. It's a different story, however, with the rudder. Holding both up elevator and left rudder together, tapping the roll key to keep the plane flat, and this is a climbing spiral. And the rudder is much, much stronger than the elevator. It really wants to pull the plane to the side far more than the plane wants to lift. However, it is performing a climbing turn like a champion here, and it's quite a tight spiral as well. This is definitely a get out of jail card maneuver with this plane, and it can also be used to set up attacks if you have an energy advantage over an opponent that's trying to attack you. And here we see a weakness of the plane. I got it nice and slow in the climbing spiral, it's taking a long time to accelerate. While it's doing that, let's look at its rolling speed. It's average, I guess. It's not particularly fast. And let's see how it goes at higher speed. Let's throw it over into a nosedive here. And it's staying fairly constant, even as the plane gets quite fast. I would have expected it to lock up entirely, and that's just not happening. Perhaps because the wings are so narrow. The rudder, of course, doesn't lock up at all, as is usual for planes with such strong rudders. OK, now lifting it up into a zoom climb to see how well it can retain the energy out of the dive. Anyway, I started this climb at 1,360 metres. I'm going to get two kilometres above that, or even a bit more, before I put it over into a hammerhead. Handles very well in that hammerhead, I must say. Uh, but the elevators struggle to get the plane to lift off, and I've recovered perhaps 1,800 metres of altitude. That's certainly enough to make this a decent boom and zoom plane, especially for a Tier 1. One last thing, let's look at the recoil. The nose really wants to drop as you fire. That's something to keep into account with your aiming. Now to battle. And to start with, I'm going to uh, break from my normal method of summarising at the end. And I'm going to look at the uh, strengths and weaknesses of the plane and uh, the tactics I'm going to use uh, now before we actually get started into a battle. Now to begin with, yes, its strengths, energy retention, its rudder, its high speed handling. Obviously, its firepower from its cannon, and it is a tough damage model. Its weaknesses, though, are important. It's poor acceleration, poor climb rate, and weak elevator, uh, both of which mean you can't afford to get yourself low and slow in this plane. It is death to do so. So my tactics are going to be very simple. Boom and zooming to keep the speed high. Uh, I'm not going too steep into a, 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 a diving attack because the elevator will work against me then. And um, only uh, getting into low speed turn fights, in which I'll use the rudder a lot, when I'm forced to do so. This is the first of two maps I'm going to show. It is a biplane battle. And at the start I've climbed because I want the altitude in order to conduct boom and zoom attacks. And as often happens, there's a good player in the other team who's picked me out who's also climbed a buffalo. Now a buffalo can turn circles around me. 
So I went for a quick head-on that I was going to snap roll out of the way. I was fortunate enough to set him a light head-on and that dealt with him. But whether I shot him down or not, I was not going to turn with that plane. I intended to dive away, uh, as indeed I'm doing now. And now I'm looking for a very simple boom and zoom attack against this KI-10. I want to approach him from a very nice flat angle, so that the plane is easy to control and aim. And then up into a zoom climb, because there's no other targets here, apart from that PBY. But I'm not worrying about the PBY, because although the, um, the FIT fragmentation incendiary uh, shells on the uh, 20mm FF cannon are very good against fighters. Against bombers, they're, they're not much chop at all. They're really only very good for scratching their paint. And yes, I have um, an AI plane uh, bugging me at the moment. I have to deal with him or he'll just follow me everywhere I go. They're a bit like that, AI planes. Uh, so yes, I, I did a rudder turn there. He's fallen down beneath me and I should be able to hit him as he climbs back up. The elevator, I struggle to keep that lead indicator, uh, the, the um, reticle in front of the lead indicator, but that should be enough to deal with him. While I reload, down here is an isolated KI-10. Just going to hit him with a few machine gun bullets. Your machine guns are pretty much useless on this plane, it's the cannons that do the work. I'm just going to extend away, climb above him, and this will be a nice little exercise in boom and zoom, showing how this plane can do it, and also the weaknesses that can make it difficult to boom and zoom a dodging target, such as this biplane. I can easily roll and follow his turns, but the elevator stops me, uh, particularly combined with the recoil that wants to lower the nose. I just cannot keep the reticle in front of the target when I open fire. So my aim ends up being a bit short. And the same will happen again here. The nose just dropped alarmingly as soon as I began to fire. So you've got to have a good amount of lead on the target. And nothing to be careful of. You dive too steeply, too close to the ground, and you can find yourself kissing the dirt. I was very, very lucky not to do so there. It's best to keep your dives shallow if possible. Now here he's just given up and he's flying straight and level, which makes the kill easy. Right, so time to reload and get back towards the uh, main battle area. In doing so, I'm gaining some altitude again. And just looking to see where the next target's going to come from. Don't need a great deal of height here when people are right down at ground level. Six, seven hundred meters is quite enough to, to gain sufficient speed in the dive. And this Henkel 51 has set himself up nicely. Just leading the target carefully. And there we go. A couple of other planes ahead. There's the KR-10. Shooter and another Henkel's P shooter's gone. Right, so I'm just looking at these guys who are approaching now. I should be able to pick up one of them at least, depending on how they dodge. And once you're committed to an attack run, you may or may not get hits on the target like that. And I'm not going to continue in that direction because it's heading straight towards the enemy side of the battlefield. So I intended to loop back and get another shot, but it didn't line up for me. Never mind. Just going to back out, climb and reset. Because the last thing I want is to be jumped at low speed by a bunch of biplanes. Uh, there's no way in the world I could turn with them, despite the rudder being strong, it's not that strong. I'm better off uh, engaging on my terms, which is high speed passes. There's a nice bunch of them there. Just going to continue to ease the plane up, keeping the speed nice and high. Sooner or later, a target will present itself. Okay, these two. Surely, with two of them together, I should be able to hit something. Maybe not. And that's a bit of a thing with the uh, FF cannon. You do have to be very precise with your shooting. They, um, they're pretty unforgiving. If you, uh, yeah, don't hit anything vital you're not going to get uh, a result that you want. Okay, the 110's a nice stable target. And took out his pilot. 
Uh, it's got to be patient. Keep following the same tactic, whether you're getting kills and you're attacking passes or not. Don't break from your discipline and start turn fighting with these planes. Because I was patient there after a couple of failed passes, my next pass gets me two kills. Now I've got a KR-27 on my tail, an extremely manoeuvrable biplane. So I'm using the ability of this plane to spiral climb, to get above him, duck past him as he tries to follow, and that's enough to shake him off my tail. And because I spiral climbed I have a bit of altitude, and I'm ready once more for another uh, nice shallow boom and zoom attack. Now these guys are... Uh, yep. Thought they'd get underneath me, but he sat up just long enough for a shot. And straight on towards the next group of enemies over here. Um, I'm getting a bit more ambitious now. I'm on the enemy side of the battlefield. I'm doing this by choice. Don't let yourself be sucked over here without, um, without choosing to do so. Hoping to just intercept someone. And yep, I'm taking fire. Not sure where from. As soon as I'm past that, there we are, it's a KR-27 is on my tail. Again into the climbing spiral, and here you can see just how effective that climbing spiral is. I have shaken that KR-27 off. There's an A5M4 and a KR-10, all extremely good planes. Um, yet the climbing spiral has been enough to protect me. Even though it hasn't got me a reversal, those planes can all easily outturn me. But I've got myself out of danger with it, and I saw a chance I might be able to have a shot at someone. Didn't work out but it is my opportunity to dive away and simply run away from them. And how quickly I am, over 450 kilometers an hour. And that gives me a nice uh, deflection shot here. For an eighth kill. This plane works extremely well in biplane battles. And here's uh, another example early on in the biplane battle of someone who's climbing to meet me. This time it's KF-45, which is probably the most uh, maneuverable uh, twin-engine plane in the game. And it's the Co model, which is the uh, best flight properties, uh, pro properties of any of them as well. And I'm pulling a, um, a split S to get underneath his attacking pass. Looping up, I want to uh, perform basically a hammerhead turn to drop down onto him. But he's turning too sharply for me and I don't have room to get guns on him. Nevertheless, using the rudder like this, just pointing the plane up and using the rudder. Except there, I let myself get squared up so it's an elevator turn instead, and see how much more slowly the plane turned. I couldn't get guns on me, I was lucky not to get guns on me instead. But here I can use the rudder, and that makes all the difference. And now I'm in control of this engagement. So you have to use the rudder when you're forced into a dogfight with someone. But most of the time you don't want to be in dogfights with people because it's not the efficient way to get kills in this plane. The boom and zoom method is. Now this is the second battle I wanted to show. Uh, this battle had more higher tiered planes. In fact there were 3.3 battle rating planes in this game. And it's relevant, not only can uh, the uh, B0 see these, um, these types of gains, but the more higher tiered premium planes certainly will. So what tactics do you use? Well, it's much the same, except you really want to accentuate uh, the plane's ability to dive and run at high speed. Look at my IAS there. I was over 600 kilometers an hour in that dive, and I'm still well over 500, even though I've flown for quite a way uh, now, uh, just horizontally. The plane's not shedding speed hardly at all. It must be a very clean, low-drag airframe design. I'm just looking to intercept, didn't get the kill, fly out to my side of the battlefield and climb and reset. If someone attacked me at this point I'd be potentially vulnerable and that's where I'd be looking to use climbing spirals and therefore the use of the rudder to get myself out of trouble. No one has, so I'm safe for now while I claw back to altitude. And in these battles uh, I want to get a bit more altitude than I would in a biplane game because that gives me more speed when I dive. Notice I'm not climbing up to high altitude in this plane. It's, it's simply not a good performer up there compared to all the other planes. Its place is down here. Low altitude boom and zoom is where you'll get the most mileage out of a 112. OK, there's a couple of targets down there. I should be able to pick one out at least. Okay, the 112's underneath me. 
Tiffy's turning in front. I might get a shot at him. Only a hit. There's a couple of planes flying behind me and I'm nervous of that, so I'm just gently bringing the plane up and around. Mystery 2's on fire, but the Tiffy's there again, so we better get another shot. My aim's off, so I readjust. And there's a pilot kill. Keeping my speed going, notice my speed is still around 400 kilometers an hour. Because my turns haven't been that sharp, just nice and gradual. And there's a third kill in quick time. No more planes in the area, so it's time to head back out to my side of the battle, reload, and regain some altitude. All the while, looking to see where the enemies are, where potential targets might be. Here's an exposed P-400, and he's using that fine fighter plane to strafe ground targets, which is rather sad. And behaviour like that must be punished. That's one bad thing about uh, getting into battle rating 3.0, 3.3 type battles. You still have light ground target maps, which means any plane can strafe the ground targets and the battles are usually so quick and uh, therefore nowhere near as enjoyable. Okay, up into the zoom climb there is a stack of planes I can attack down there once the cannons come back online. Just going to wait. That's a choice between the planes on my left, or the Spitfire who's isolated on my right, or the lag who's approaching late. And I decided to go for the Spitfire. Don't want him coming in behind me. Just a few snapshots just to get my aim set up. And I've got him with a nice deflection shot, and there he goes. We only have one ground target left on our team, so this battle's just about over. In fact, it ends as I'm approaching here, looking for a deflection shot on one of these lags. So I hope that's been helpful. That's a very, very simple plane to fly. And if you fly it using that basic boom and zoom high speed technique, you'll do well in it. In fact, you'll even be able to top the leaderboard in a uh, battle rating 3.0 game. Even if it is one that ends in five minutes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Until the next one, I'll see you in the skies.